All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome the 2013 U.S. Open champion, Justin Rose, into the Media Center. Justin uh, started with a 65, six under par in the first round. Uh, today, a one under 70 for a 36 hole total of seven under 135. Uh, Justin, let's go through the card a little bit today. You started on 10, five straight pars, and then your birdie on 15. Take us through that. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple of key up and downs before that. Sort of, the, you know, the round started much like yesterday, a bit of a scramble, a couple of great up and downs, especially on number 11, which was nice. You know, you didn't want to drop a shot early in the round after yesterday. And uh, then, like you say, birdied 15. I had a lovely little draw 9-iron into that pin and left it right below the hole, straight putt. Was able to make that. And then, um, yeah, birdied 18. Had a really good three-wood off the tee, quite an aggressive line. Um, left it in the front bunker, but had a good lie and was able to make pretty simple up and down there. And, you know, that point was, uh, you know, turning obviously a couple under, got it to eight and, you know, felt like there was more, more, you know, more, more birdies out there. But, you know, back nine proved to be a bit more of a struggle. Um, but, yeah, all in all, a good day. Yeah, bogey at one, but then a, a nice birdie at two. What club did he have in there? Yeah, um, I hit seven iron and I hit, it chose to be aggressive off the tee because, you know, it's such a skinny green that I felt like if I did hit a good tee shot, it potentially was a birdie hole. You know, if I could get in there with a short to mid iron, um, you know, I could definitely hit it a bit more accurately and then everything feeds to where that pin was in the middle of the green. So, um, you know, I got rewarded off the good tee shot there, but hit it in, hit a seven iron into about three feet that just kind of land on the right edge of the green and, and cambered down. That was it for the birdies. You bogeyed four, but finished yeah. really nicely with pars on eight and nine. Yeah, I felt like really the third, the third hole, I lost a bit of momentum, had a great opportunity there, had 90 yards to the hole. Um, it was a, definitely a birdie opportunity and then you know, laid up in the hazard on number four, so a bit of a lapse of concentration there. Uh, that's kind of where I felt like momentum stopped a little bit for me, which is a shame because I feel like, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, there's some potential birdie, birdie holes through there. But, uh, yeah, the so three, four was a little blip in the round, but, you know, managed to put that behind me. And then, you know, two good pars on eight and nine is always a good way to close out your round. All right, let's open it up to questions. If you have one, a microphone will come around. Start right here. Jason right here on the right side. Justin, you were one back through 36 holes at Mary and obviously different scoring conditions, but... Any comparisons that you can make between that week and this week so far? Um, you know, kind of opposite in a sense. Um, I, I must have worked really hard to get back to within one because I got off to a poor start at Marion. In this this year, this week, obviously, I've gotten off to a, a great start, but um, the situation could well be similar. I mean, you know, there's a few guys at five under par with a, with with their afternoon round to play, and you know, the golf course still with a good round of golf is yielding some birdies. So, you know, I'm not going to be far away. If if I mean, I might might well be leading, but. Um, at this point, there's not a lot to worry about. If you're one ahead, one behind, it's you know, a lot of golf to be played, but it's the perfect spot after two days. Let's go in the right aisle here, in the center. So similarities. Yeah, I mean, I think um, still not feeling like I had my top t I was. I still remember working through the week with Sean at Marion. I still wasn't 100% dialed in with my long game. So... Sometimes it's nice to be in contention with things to work on going into the weekend. You know, I think sometimes if you feel perfect after two days, it's sometimes it's hard to keep keep that level every single day. So uh, that that could be a similarity. All right, now in the center here. Rosie, you mentioned the par saves earlier. Par save at number eight comes to mind immediately. Can you almost take more from that kind of sort of grinding par in this particular tournament than you can in other tournaments? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you know, you know you're going to need to make those sort of key five, six, seven, eight foot putts for par, and invariably they have a lot of swing on them on this golf course. So you know they are makeable. You you know you feel like you should make them, but they're they're kind of fifty fifty putts. So when when you're making them, you're really keeping up the m momentum, and then you miss one, and you really feel like you know you've lost something. But uh, even though they're fifty fifty putts, the the psychological um, gain from making them is, is like a whole shot. Let's go over here on the right side. Down in front. Hey, Justin. Um, can you speak to the importance of uh, hanging around in major championships, particularly U.S. Opens? Uh, so often, guys kind of just are right there, and then opportunity is there on Sundays. What, what, you know, what's the is it, what's the different dynamic of a major? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think sometimes the hanging around mentality is almost more important when you're three or four back. And, you know, you feel like you should press or you want to press and you want to get your name to the top of the leaderboard. But sometimes the patience that's required is just about hanging around. Um, you know, often the golf course gets tougher for the leaders in the afternoon. So, you know, I've always felt like there's an opportunity and a mindset that, 
just hanging around, you know, um, obviously wait for your run. And it's going to be the same for me in contention. And then, you know, even if I'm in the lead, it's going to be about being very patient, but still waiting for my run, I'm still trying to hit positive golf shots, still looking for the, for the momentum, you know. Um, and yeah, just working really hard and fighting really hard if you're out of position, because, you know, each, each little save can, can mean a lot come Sunday. Let's go over here in the far right, Ron. Yeah, I think this is a great venue for that. I mean, I just saw Jim Furyk shot the round of the day so far today, four under par. So, you know, it kind of it, it, use him as a great example. You know, it means that, you know, this golf course is, is there for everybody. You know, he managed, you know, Jim Furyk's never wasted a shot on the golf course in his life, I don't think. Um, you know, he, the way he plays, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's a true, you know, he's obviously US Open champion. So the way he manages his game, you know, is a, is a lesson to us all, really. And I think, uh, you know, my caddy, Lordy, today said, Basically, Tiger's a Jim Furyk with just a bit of uh, extra gear, you know, in terms of distance. But Tiger just doesn't waste a shot. You know, people think he's a very flamboyant player and a very aggressive player. He's one of the most conservative players out there um, and strategic players. So, you know, that style of golf really lends itself well this week. Go over here in the middle on the right side. I just wanted to find out on your tee shot on four. They said on TV there might have been a camera problem, and it sounded like there was some discussion on the tee with the camera. Was that the case? Uh, it was just one of those awkward holes. You know, it's a double tee box, and uh, the guys were teeing off on 17, and we were kind of doing that little rotation where they'd hit one, we'd hit one. I just kind of felt a little bit out of my routine, and there definitely, you know, there was a couple of camera, you know, like cell phone. Uh, yeah, there, there was a click, but it wasn't like that's the first time it's happened this week or the last time it's going to happen. But. It just amounted to a poor shot, and I just kind of never felt really set. And that's the frustrating part as a player. So, you know, you probably mentioned something about the camera, but ultimately I never really felt set on the shot or the strategy. I was very close to hitting driver on that hole too. So just one of those really kind of half-committed situations, which is frustrating. Let's go to Gary down here, front right. Could you talk about the conditions? Was it a little bit firmer or faster, or could you kind of compare today to yesterday? Yeah, I think you know it was comparable for sure. I think because it was it was so much moisture in the air early, it was like it was sort of misting. It was almost misting, but it felt like rain. So I think that that kept a lot of moisture in the golf course, you know, on the front nine. But you, you uh, I would say that the greens were maybe a step or two firmer with your iron shots coming in than they would have been yesterday. Certainly yesterday morning, I'd imagine. So I think the wind's picking up from what I can see out there right now. And if if, if the if the marine layer burns off a bit and you do get a bit of breeze this afternoon, you know, that will change the golf course really fast. Let's go to Dave here in the left aisle. Yeah, Justin, just curious, would you, would you say that overall the golf course is just about where it needs to be given the scoring and, you know, the firmness of the greens, the speeds and so forth? Yeah, I think so. I think quite often we see U.S. Opens guys get under par. You know, it's about who finishes under par, really, is, is, the, is the trick. But guys do tend to get it under par the first couple of days, and there's a bit more moisture in the golf course. And, you know, but things can change really, really fast, right? So I think the USJ would probably have loved the course set up. They'd have probably loved five mile an hour more breeze both days. And then I think it would have been a, you know, a very demanding, very challenging setup. And, you know, um, par would have probably meant something a little bit more than it has the first couple of days. But that doesn't mean that's not going to be the case on the weekend. I, I think this golf course has plenty of teeth in it. Um, and because you're playing right on the ocean, you always have to respect Mother Nature. You can't set it up for perfect weather and then not get it. So uh, I think it's right there where it needs to be. Let's go uh, Brian and then Jeff. Um, Brooks is, is a few strokes back, but I'm just curious if, um, if you notice his name um, when it is up there on the leaderboard. And, and secondly, what do you think sort of sets him apart um, from a lot of guys when it comes to particularly major championships? I mean, I don't, I don't know, really. I mean, I just, I, I'm going on his sound bites, really. He just gets, seems to get very focused. Uh, he seems to let the mistakes roll off his back. You know, I've heard him say that, so I'm just regurgitating it, but I, I don't know. Um, you know, I'd imagine it's a good start for him. He looked rusty in Canada, and to come here, that's it's a great first couple of days. He's probably feeling like he can build into the week and, and put a good weekend together, and, and no doubt, you know, him on the leaderboard, with his, you know, his recent form in majors, absolutely. You know, he's the he's the threat. He's the guy probably that you know his name is standing out more than anybody else's for sure. Uh, Jeff, right in the center in the left right. aisle. Um, Justin, regarding that indecision on four, is that something you'll this evening kind of go through the golf course again and 
think about it, and then will you watch the golf tomorrow um, at some point just to see how the golf course is playing before you, you tee up late in the day? I'll leave that to my caddy, to be honest, to to, uh, to do all the watching. To you know, I find like that's not very conducive for. When I watch golf, I want everyone to miss a putt. I want everyone to hit it in the rough. And when they when they make putts, I get frustrated. And I you know, so uh, <laughs> um, it doesn't do me any good really to watch it. But I think the strategy that you can learn is can sometimes be important. But the one or two nuggets I might get from watching it may not obviously I don't think help me. So uh, I'll leave that to him. But today. I think the situation I was in, maybe because I had a discussion with Lordy on the tee, and we probably hit four iron because I was eight under and leading. I, I think today was driver, if I'm honest. If I look back at it, I probably let where I was and the situation dictate the club off the tee. I think it was uh, with the pin placement in the wind direction. I think it was a driver hole today. Let's go back on the right side here. Hi, Justin. How much do you feel your huge experience will count uh, over the next couple of days?